And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before we do get into today's video, as always, make sure you do drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more Celtic content. So I hope you guys are all okay. We've got a lot to discuss in today's video. As you can tell by the title, there's been a fifth bid for Matt O'Reilly, which we need to go over and talk about the whole situation because um, this thing is really being dragged out. As things stand, um, no team is willing to match uh, what Celtic want for him, which is quite ridiculous, to be honest with you. The player is worth 10 million more than we are asking for, in my opinion. Um, but we'll discuss this new transfer and see if it may be the one that might get accepted. It might be the one that might match Celtic's asking price. But we'll discuss that in just a moment. But before I do get into the main story, let's talk about uh, Kyogo, of course, because um, he picked up a shoulder injury on Sunday against uh, Hibernium. And that did raise some concerns from the Celtic fan base about if he's going to be okay for the next match or is he going to be out for a long time. And of course, as things stand right now, we don't have a second striker at the club that can come in and replace him. So that is quite concerning. Um, so uh, he's currently our sole striker at Celtic, which is really, really bad. Um, and now we have an update on this situation from Brendan Rodgers, who spoke um, on the situation. He said he had an issue with his shoulder. Obviously, the guys have tried to put it back in, but he's felt the pain. So we didn't want to risk that. So hopefully he'll be okay in the next couple of days. So this shoulder injury is a reoccurring one for Kyogo. He seems to have a lot of issues with his shoulder. Um, thankfully, it's not really a body part he has to use, like, so I suppose, during the game. I guess it's quite frustrating if his shoulder pops out of his socket. But, um, it's yeah, it's a little bit annoying. He obviously can't play in those conditions if his shoulder keeps getting uh, ruined like that. But this, of course, is a little kick up the arse to go all out and try and sign another striker this transfer window at some point. Of course, we spoke recently about how Celtic were um, kind of renegotiating um, with Norwich to try and get Adam Mida to the club. That still appears to be the case. Um, but he actually recently appeared for Norwich in the championship um, off the bench in their recent loss to Oxford United, which was a quite surprising result, to be fair. Um, but yeah, Adam Ida wants to leave Norwich. Uh, we all know that. He, we know that he wants to come to Celtic and we know that we are actively trying to pursue him. We're just trying to agree that transfer fee for him, which is around £8 million. Look, money aside, we need a striker regardless. Um, Kyogo, of course, his shoulder injury is a reoccurring one. We can't go into the season just one. Well, we are in the season now. We can't be going into the season after the transfer window with one sole striker in the, in the club. That is really, really poor. Realistically, we need three strikers in the team. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad we sold O for like £4.5 million or whatever it was, but selling him was quite stupid in a way because there was no one coming in afterwards to uh, take his position as a backup striker. Um, I think Adam Idol will compete with Kyogo in terms of first-team football, but we need, I think we need another striker as well past getting Adam Ida. Once the Adam Ida deal is through, done and dusted, which hopefully it will be at some point, but there still needs to be an attempt to get another striker in the team as well, um, someone that can play back up to both of them. But we'll see what happens. But yeah, that shoulder injury, thankfully, it might not be as bad as first looked, but that does kind of uh, give us a little bit more incentive to go and get another striker because things like that can happen really, really quickly and things can turn south really, really quickly as well. But let's go over this um, Matt O'Reilly news because that is why you guys are all here because Atalanta are preparing to submit a fifth bid for Celtic midfielder Matt O'Reilly following their previous £20 million offer, which Celtic rejected over the weekend. Persistent throughout the transfer window, Atalanta's interest in O'Reilly is part of a broader competition involving clubs from both the Premier League, such as Brighton, Chelsea and Southampton, and other European teams like Atletico Madrid and Inter Milan. Despite the escalating bids with Atalanta, initial one around £14 million, Celtic have consistently held firm in their valuation, under no pressure to sell one of their key players. Brendan Rodgers, Celtic's manager, has talked about the club's strong position in the negotiations insisting that any departure would require a record-breaking offer, instructing clubs to value the player, not the league. So according to Sky Sports, Atalanta believes their forthcoming fifth bid might be finally Celtic's valuations, uh, potentially setting a new club record if accepted. But they need to act fast. Brighton is seemingly going to match Celtic's asking price in an attempt to get him down south. So this report comes from Anthony Joseph, who works for Sky Sports in Italy. And he said, Atalanta are preparing a fifth bid for Celtic midfielder Matt O'Reilly, according to our colleagues uh, in Sky Sports in Italy. Sky Sports News revealed last night that the Hoops rejected a fourth bid of £20 million from the Syria club. So, yeah, really um, interesting, I guess. They put a bid in last night. I can't keep updating you guys when bids get put into Matt O'Reilly because 
there's so many going on with Matt already right now. There's so many bids go, bit, being put in place. Uh, but yeah, fourth bid was rejected last night, supposedly for £20 million, which again is £5 million under our asking price. I don't see what they're trying to achieve here by trying to lowball Celtic. Um, they know that a lot of teams are interested in O'Reilly. They know £25 million is a bargain, so I'm not too sure what they're trying to achieve by uh, lowballing us constantly. Um, and that's five bids now. Let's take the piss a little bit. Um, let's get match the price or don't go after him whatsoever. You don't want to find a better deal in the current transfer market than will Matt O'Reilly right now. So not too sure what they're trying to achieve. But Matt O'Reilly played yesterday, of course, and uh, he looked pretty decent. He wasn't, it wasn't his best performance, don't get me wrong. Um, but hopefully that's not the last you see of him in a Celtic shirt. Um, but we'll see how this transfer story develops in the next few days, of course, because as you can see constantly, there's news going on around him. Um, the guy is set to leave at some point, possibly if someone can match a transfer bid for him. Um, again, uh, yes, he, he deserves praise again for uh, his professionalism, of course, throughout the whole ordeal. He's still very much focused on Celtic, still very much putting 100% into the team week in, week out. And you have to respect him for that. And we'll see what he decides as well. You know, there could be a world where he says, actually, no, I want to stay at Celtic for another year, maybe. Um, that would be a really cool situation. But of course, the, with the amount of teams interested in him and the money that's going to be thrown at him, it probably will be hard to see that, that being the outcome. Um, the outcome that we probably all want as well, that he stays at Celtic. Of course, he spoke yesterday about how Rogers um, <clears throat> said that if he was to leave, would have we wouldn't spend all the money on one replacement. A bit of lack, lack of ambition in his voice when he was saying it. Uh, don't blame the manager, blame the board. And I reckon we'll spend about seven to eight million pounds to find his replacement in, in an ideal scenario. That'd be that'd be quite quite good. Um, but of course, if he does leave, that's another position we need to fill, uh, as well as a striker, a left back, and a centre half. So there's still a lot of work to be done this transfer window. Um, I don't feel like we're going to get it all done in the next few weeks. I feel like we are going to be left a little bit short in some areas of the pitch come the end of the transfer window, or we're going to panic buy some players and leave everything to the last minute like we always do. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts on what we discussed in today's video. As always, if you're not yet already, make sure you do like this video and make sure you are subscribed to the channel for more Celtic content because as I just covered there briefly, there's a lot of work needs to be done on the, on the current side. A lot of positions need to be filled and there's about two and a bit weeks left of the transfer window. Probably close to three weeks actually left of the transfer window. And um, things aren't... Um, but there's a lot of things to be done. So yeah, keep subscribed to the channel because we'll update you on all the latest Celtic news. Um, so, so yeah, drop a like, subscribe. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.